Okay, so now we're gonna go inside of the muscle fiber, inside of a cell. So this is a single cell. We're taking a chunk out of it. Single cell, we're taking a chunk out of it. So we're inside. These are the same models, even though it's two different companies, right? Just wanna ask the class, see how good they are. What's this white thing called? The base, they got that. Now, don't be fooled. What's this gray thing called? Base. Base. Those are both bases, different colors. Same thing here. Same structures, different colors. Same structures, different colors. Okay? So, like we said, outside you're going to find endomyceum, which holds the motor neuron and its telodendria in place. It's going to hold the capillary in place. It's going to hold the myosatellite cells in place. That's outside. But if we compare it to this one, endomycete, holding the motor neuron in place with its telodendria coming off, the little branches at the end. And here you can see that, that at the end of the telodendria, it swells up. It creates what's known as a synaptic terminal a little swelling. So if my arm is a motor neuron, my forearm is the axon, my fingers are the telodendria, and at the end of my fingers there would be little swellings known as the synaptic terminals. And they sit on the muscle cell. They don't actually touch it, they just hover just above it at the area known as the neuromuscular junction. Now let's just do a little detail here. Students love detail. Notice that there's a yellow thing inside of there. That's the actual axon of the motor neuron. What is this white stuff surrounding? I think I heard it. Someone said it. Myelin. myelin. Right, so this is a myelinated neuron, meaning the axon is covered and protected by myelin produced by the Schwann cell, right? So you see actually Schwann cells covering the axon. You have it here too. Right? You see the axon and you see the myelin sheath and this is the Schwann cell that lives on the neuron. And this is the gray nucleus of the Schwann cell. Here, they do a much nicer job with regard to the myosatellite cell, right? Myosatellite cell, myosatellite cell, myosatellite cell, all right? There's a beauty, all right? Different color, easy to identify, underneath the endomyceum, held in place by the endomyceum. Neither have capillaries present. Go inside. Inside, you have the organelles, and they only show you the organelles that are significant for the muscle cell. All the organelles of the cell are found here, but they only do the significant ones. Most significant, contain, you know, basically filling the whole entire inside of the cell are these cylinders. These are the myofibrils. They're made up of protein. They're made up of what we call thin filaments, thick filaments. Proteins that use names like myosin, actin, troponin, tropomyosin, titan, different proteins organized into these contractile cylinders. This is the contractile organelle of the muscle cell. This, 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 all these cylinders. Every cylinder is wrapped here in white, here in tan, sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is a derivative of the endoplasmic reticulum. So it does what an endoplasmic reticulum does, synthesis of chemical molecules, but for the muscle cell, it also contains and stores calcium ions. So when we said in lecture that one of the functions of the muscle cell is to store minerals, that's where it is. Inside the sarcoplasmic reticulum, you have high concentration of calcium ions in solution. Okay. Orange, 
here in blue. T tubules. So you see that the T tubules are embedded within the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The T tubule, as you can see best here, is a network of microscopic tubes, hollow tubes, that connect the sarcolemma, cell membrane, with the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That's their role, to connect this to these, to connect this to the white, to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Now, why do we want this connected to this? Well, let's backtrack. Why do we want this connected to the brain? Because the brain sends the motor signal to tell the cell to contract. But does this contract? The sarcolemma? No. What contracts? The myofibrils. And they're inside. So we have to take the signal that came from the brain, it's transferred at the neuromuscular junction to the membrane, and then transferred from the membrane to the sarcoplasmic reticulum via the T tubule. That's the role of the T tubule. Transfer the signal from the sarcolemma membrane to the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So that the sarcoplasmic reticulum can release the calcium and begin the process of muscle contraction. That's how these intertwine. So these are significant structures found only in a muscle cell. Myofibril, sarcoplasmic reticulum, T tubule. Final note. Where the T tubule, orange or blue, meets the sarcoplasmic reticulum, white or tan, this is known as a triad. Three pieces. One, two, three. Triad. The part of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, right, looks like a bit of Swiss cheese here, but the part that is right next to the T tubule is called the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, white orange T-tubule, and then another terminal cistern of the reticulum that's up here, that is a triad. That's where the highest concentration of calcium is stored within the sarcoplasmic reticulum, at the triad, within the terminal cistern of the sarcoplasmic reticulum, covering the myofibril inside of the myofiber or muscle fiber within the fascicle of the muscle of the human body on the planet earth in what universe are we in milky way in the milky way okay that would be your answer for the test if you do that you're you're in good shape okay other things that are here she doesn't believe me nucleus Right? There are multiple nuclei. Nucleus, multiple nuclei. That's the nucleus of the muscle fiber. Here in gray, mitochondria, lots of them, interspersed between the myofibrils. Here in the little red things, all these little red things are the mitochondria of this model. 